What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Echale Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Quintero. And today, you're here because you want to hear some dirty cheese, man. That's what we're going to do. So what I did, um, and welcome to these like off-season sessions because they're easier for me to do um, as I prepare for the actual season to start in September. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. Let me know if you're watching us on YouTube. Welcome. It's the first time that I'm ever on YouTube doing a podcast. So this is all new. You guys can see the setup. It was way easier just recording a podcast and all of a sudden adding video is like a whole nother demon. I did YouTube in the past and, um, yeah, I think YouTube and podcasting can be a little bit harder because now you're actually trying to, you know, cut different camera scenes, make sh making sure that it sounds fluid and whatnot. So, yeah, it's a little difficult, but here we are. All right. So one of the things that I did was I asked on my Instagram. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram, arroba or at Jose Quintero TV. That is my handle. Or if you're on Echale Podcast, Echale Podcast on Instagram. Yeah. So I asked you guys, I want to do a QA. and a uh, I know a lot of people tend to ask me questions and I'm like, okay, sometimes I forget. Literally, if I'm the if I am the type of person, if I don't answer within the first five minutes, I answered in my head. <laughs> All right. So I'm sorry. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take the opportunity to just ask people on social media. Hey, what do you want to know? I'm like looking at the at the timer over here. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I haven't had the, uh, used this feature. But what do you guys want to know? What do you want to ask? What cheese miss out there? Look at me. I'm getting text messages while doing the podcast. Thanks, y'all, for messaging me. <laughs> all right. So we're going to look at all these questions. So, yeah, I said I was going to answer them all regardless of what people asked. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first one because I also don't want to waste your time. And I know some of y'all are waiting for a certain type of tea, right? So prior job you had that you disliked the most and why i'll start off with an easy one so i was hired back in 20 dang what was it 2010 2011 i was hired as a front uh, office assistant or a warehouse and i literally was like oh hell yeah i'm gonna be fulfilling orders and packaging and whatnot so i went to the first day of the job i did the training and i'm like oh that's so cool so then uh the owners of the warehouse were like hey we're gonna need a little bit of help in the back like um you know they had merchandise that they sold through ebay and i was like yeah no worries no like all oh, cool i had a button-up shirt i had my slacks i had dress shoes and it was summer and it was hot so they had me moving uh, car equipment. So, well, car accessories, not equipment. So like seats, uh, steering wheel covers, um, rear view mirrors, all that fancy stuff from one end to another, ladders. And it is hot in there. And I'm like, what the hell? And the front desk lady that was training me was like, dude, just saying, they're going to ask you again tomorrow, and they do this to all their employees. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They hired me for the front desk to take care of all the like their shipping stuff, like what you're doing, but to help you because you need help. <clears throat> yeah, I only lasted a week because I told them, hey, my school schedule changed. I'm not going to be able to come as often as I would have loved to, but thank you so much for your business. So working in warehouse was definitely not for me. Aside from that, I loved working with uh, students and I worked in a program called Gear Up and that was a lot of fun. I made some really awesome connections, but I do have to say that I disliked at the time the management or the way that we were approaching this program where it felt that um, we cared more about the numbers than the students. And that was, that never felt right to me. So I was always a black sheep and I never really paid attention. So hence why I left. <laughs> All right. Well, but I did tell the students like, Hey, I'm leaving because I'm reaching, uh, or I'm going after my dreams as you should. So they, they always knew like, yo, get your bread and go do you. So I was like, hell yeah, let's see. All right. So these are in Spanish and in English. Okay. So, depending on how you guys asked, I will answer. ¿Cuál fue el detonante 
para cambiar tu estilo de alimentación y ejercicio. So what made me change? Uh, what was it? Back in, well, the pandemic. <laughs> the pandemic really just kind of made me want to. Well, it all started with a picture. Me and my friends went to San Diego and I remember like I had been drinking so much during college and I had obviously gained weight, but I didn't, I knew I had gained weight, but I really didn't see the weight gain if that makes sense um and i mean i was always a big dude uh never really scrawny and never really really big but i remember seeing a picture and of myself in san diego with uh my best friend his wife and then another friend and i'm and i was like you know what i think it's time to start taking care of myself starting start taking care of my health Uh, that means moving more. That means eating or better options. So back in 2016, that's when I started like to take fitness a little bit more serious. And then during the pandemic, I was like, you know what? I want to push myself to see how far my body can go and see how much I can transform and create these healthy habits. And one of the habits that I stopped doing was alcohol. So that was huge for me just because obviously coming from not not during the pandemic. Sorry, I'm going back to 2016. I was like huge. Um, yeah, I was an avid, avid drinker. So I'm glad I was able to control that. I literally quit drinking for about a year and a half or so. And it really just helped me solidify that I don't like drinking. Yeah, I don't like alcohol. I mean, I'll still have a beer or two or I'll have some shots there, but Nunca, I don't want to black out if that makes sense. Like that, that's, that's not fun anymore because before I used to, my mom would, would always say like, oh, you're just drinking to get drunk. And I'm like, yeah, basically I had issues and I hadn't <laughs> gone to therapy. Uh, somebody said, any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Let me see. Vámonos a la siguiente. Are you currently dating I am single and ready to mingle. Uh, so, no, I am not dating anybody. I hate dating sites or dating websites, um, but I'm on them. <laughs> and I don't hate them because, what was I going to say? I don't hate them. I'm just on them. It's a love and hate relationship. I was going to say something dumb, but I was like, you know what? Never mind. How did you decide to leave your previous job to the new one? So how did I decide to leave Univision and go to where I'm at right now? Uh, I mean, I was producing at the time, and then I went to Mexico, and I remember getting a phone call while I was in Mexico. It was my brother's birthday. Estaba yo en un jaripeo, uh, a rodeo. And they're like, hey, there's this new position with uh, Angelica Vale. Not sure if you're interested. And at the time, obviously, my dream job had always been to work for Univision. So I was like, well, uh, no, I don't think so. So the person who called me was like, are you down? I think you'd be a good fit for the producer role. And I'm like, let me think about it. I'm in Mexico. I really don't want to think about work right now. That's why I came to Mexico. So when I came back to Mexico, um... I was like, you know what? Let me go have this meeting uh, in slash interview with Angelica. Like, if I don't get the job, at least I met one of my one of my idols. Like, you know, I grew up watching her novelas, and then everybody I think recognizes La Femas Bella and how impactful that was to a generation of people who did not feel like they fit in into a certain mold. So, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go meet her. And I don't know. It was just a two, three hour conversation where I felt right. I felt comfortable. I still didn't know what I was going to do. But when I went to work the next day, I talked to my boss at the time and he, and I let him know like, Hey, this is the situation that's going on. And he advised you're young. You don't have kids. And don't live in the what if. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I don't want to live in the what if. So I decided to take a risk because I've never lived in the what if. And that's how I got that, like, you know, that far in in my career at such a young age. Um, so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. So I did it. And here I am. Let's see. Next question. Uh, I was mad. Oh, okay. So this one's this one's a little juicy. 
Let's see, because somebody said, I was mad when Omar made ho horrible comments about your first interview on air. How did you feel? How do? How would you respond to Omar today? I don't like him since that moment because he did you dirty. <sighs> so let me go ahead and address this. I didn't take offense to it. I don't know why you should be taking offense to it either. No. So I think the interview that, if I don't recall, it's a Gina Rodriguez interview that I did for their show at the time. Um, and I said a word wrong that I've put on TikTok. I've made fun of it myself currently in my new job. Uh, and they made fun of me in a playful way uh, at, at the time. I guess some people didn't like that. But honestly, I appreciated it because any constructive criticism, I think there's there's two different types of people, how you take criticism and how you react to criticism. Uh, I'm the type of person that like I want all feedback, good, bad, ugly. And I've never been the type of person to be like, oh, well, well, I don't like how you do to that. Uh, you know, no, like I respect Omar y Argelia's trajectory and I respect their 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 knowledge and their advice. So if they made a funny bit or a, a, a funny segment out of that interview, shoot, I understand it more than ever, you know, being on radio uh, now. At the time, I was all like, oh, okay, they're giving me constructive criticism, but I also didn't comprehend what a radio segment looked like or was structured. But now looking back at it, I'm like, dude, that was hilarious. Like anything is content and they definitely knew how to make it content. Uh, but uh, I'm always thankful, appreciative. Uh, so what would I say to Omar? Genius. <laughs> Genius because you took a moment that I didn't, you know, it, it was also a learning lesson that I needed to to better my Spanish, and I'm still bettering my Spanish. It's not like, uh, oh, ya sé el idioma español y ya no me voy a mejorar. No, I'm still reading books. I'm still practicing uh, tongue twisters. I'm still, you know, if I'm in this industry, I'm never going to stop learning, and that was definitely a learning lesson. Anecdota. Hopefully I said it right, because if they're listening, they're going to be like, this boot didn't learn anything. All right. Ah, let me see. If you could travel, uh, if you could time travel, would you go to the past or future? And what would you do? Ah, uh, this one's a good one. I think I would go. I, I, I wouldn't want to go to the future, honestly. I wouldn't want to go to the future um, because what's in the future is going to be beautiful and I cannot wait to experience it for the very first time. What's in the past already happened. If I could go back in time, I would go back to a moment where I could see myself from afar because you know the multiverse, you're not supposed to interact with your past self because you don't want to mess up the future. Um, but I would leave messages, clues. Hey, keep going. Echale ganas. You're in the right path. You are loved. Uh, you're going to be okay. You know, your traumas as a child, you're going to overcome them. Um, so, so yeah, I would go back to the past just to see myself in those vulnerable moments, good, bad, ugly. And even though I still have, like, if I, if I think back at the moments that were the ugliest, I still have some of that feeling and I can still, you know, go back and be like, wow, that's how I felt. But being able to go back to the past and seeing it firsthand is, I, I, I think, would be a different feeling. Um, now, if you're telling me if I could go back to the past past, like before I was born, I would do definitely do it. I would have loved to go back to the golden era. I would have loved to meet Maria Felix, Pedro Infante, Jorge Negrete, like all these classic idols that I love, Vicente Fernandez, and kind of... See, and also kind of be in that vibe at that time. So I would I would definitely go back to the past. Um, I mean, do you find yourself patting yourself on the back more or telling yourself to work more? Both. I think I've always wanted to do theater, acting, and whatnot. And I was reading in a book, um, este de, de Arturo alias Ayub and it was a quote that Jeff Bezos said that your passion 
uh, you don't get to choose your passion. Your passion chooses you. And even though I wanted to go into acting, even though I wanted to go into entertainment, I inevitably ended up majoring in business and being, you know, in this entrepreneurship marketing. And I love it. And I love it. So I am working uh, on side hustles, right? Because I have student loans to to pay. I have a, a car to pay. Uh, I want to break that generational um, trauma with money that me, my parents, and my brothers have. So I am working, hustling, but being more strategic about it. But I am patting myself on the back more because I also understand how much I've done and um, how much I can do. Uh, so, so yeah, and obviously it helps that, like, friends are patting you on the back. They're telling you to, like, keep going, echale ganas. But I definitely find myself talking to myself and being like, Jose, you're such a chingon, you're a badass. Like, stay humble, stay grounded, keep going, keep pushing, block out the negativity, take in the negativity, because sometimes it's, uh, what others see as negativity is actually constructive criticism, just that other person doesn't know how to it, it's not always the right approach. Pero tampoco seas un pendejo y te dejes. You know? So, there's that. Let me see. So, yes. Following because of your previous radio station, are you still in co good communication? Metas cumplidas. I've always wanted to do radio, and this is a meta. And I'm appreciative of ONA, all their lessons, teachings, and whatnot. But I'm way more appreciative of Angelica. She's just allowed me to to fly. Like, you know, and, and, and her being who she is, the, the, you know, she comes from a family where I, I guess you could say they're Mexican royalty, you know, but knowing or thinking that they're Mexican royalty, that you feel like, oh, they're going to treat you a certain way. Hell no. Like these people are some of the most humble people that I've ever met. And I've met a lot of assholes in my life, you know, in the entertainment industry, outside of the entertainment industry, in the educational uh, world when, when I worked at uh, Cal State San Bernardino. And I'm like, yo, I've always said, if you could be a nice person, just be a nice person. And guess what? They're nice people uh, so that so yes i was shocked uh but i have uh, uh like i guess si es una meta cumplida working on a morning radio show and que le estemos echando ganas and you know to do it with passion communication uh love unity so yeah i couldn't meet, be happier uh i know it might be natural but it is so natural to like both genders, even though you prefer one better. I know it might be natural, but is it natural to like both genders, even though you prefer one better? Well, I consider myself heterosexual, uh, so I like women. But, dude, yo chuleo a mis amigos all the time. I'm like, hell yeah, like my best friends. And I think this culture of homophobia, especially in the Latino community, like we need to break those cycles. We need to be able to to show other men like that we can appreciate them. Um, you know, women do it all the time. Like, hey, you look great in that. Men can do it too. And it doesn't mean anything. And if you do like men or if you do like women or if you like both, it's okay. And who cares? You know, que se chule todo mundo. It just feels great. Un halago. What sports do you like and who are your favorite teams? I wish I could say that I'm like super into sports, uh, but but I'm not. You know, I, I understand them a lot more because I have to for work and because obviously my family's huge into sports. Like my dad's a huge Dodger fan. He's been liking, well, playing baseball since he was 19. But I think because he was playing baseball since he was 19 and when he had us, he tried to make us love baseball so much that we ended up hating it uh, uh, for a while that we were like, oh, we want nothing to do with it. But I mean, by association, go Dodgers and I'll still go to the games. And uh, I, I'm, I know it like I know the sport because I grew up with the sport. My brothers, on the other hand, they were like, we don't want to play baseball, but we love soccer. So they played soccer. I didn't. I was more of the theater kid, uh, you know, working because I working out because I like to work out. And then my brother, uh, the middle one now loves 
basketball. He plays basketball. He plays soccer. I don't know what else he plays. He basically does everything that I didn't do. Like he plays all the instruments. He plays. Oh, you saw him in. You guys saw him in the last episode. Um, so, but if I had to go to well, with teams, soccer would be uh, Chivas, um, Barcelona. Let me go with LAFC, Lakers. Even though, like, basketball is also, like, my mom played basketball. My uncles in Mexico played basketball. Well, they still play basketball. They're, like, in, in teams, and they played uh, for for the state of Michoacan. So I'm like, uh, yeah, my family's very athletic on that aspect. I just didn't come out ath- athletic like them. So my uncles also tried to make me, not make me, but they were, like, encouraged me to play basketball. And, again, because I was being told what to do, I also strayed away from it. So I guess I'm a rebel in that way. Did I miss a sport? Oh, oh, Broncos. Go Broncos football. (laughs) One of my closest friends, uh, he's a Bronco fan. I didn't have a team. And we started going tailgating in San Diego every time Broncos and Chargers used to play. And it just kind of became a thing for years. So by association or bandwagon, bandwagon, whatever you want to call it, Bronco fan. Let me see. How old were you when you started in radio? When I started in radio, like actually as a job, I was 25 years old. So it's only been five years. When I started doing YouTube and actually practicing radio, I want to say it was 2013. I graduated in 2014. So I took a radio class, a radio production class, and then also a radio speech class. Um, I'm doing commercials, so that was always a lot of fun. So I've been practicing, um, I guess you could say, radio production for a while, a lot longer than I have being on air. Being on air, my very first time was in 2016 in Mexico, and yeah, it was in December. So, so yeah, and then I knew I wanted to work in Spanish entertainment, and I sound like a broken record because I've said it multiple times. I practiced my Spanish ever since I was small. So that's a huge part of, you know, what industry you want to go into. Just practice it and manifest it. You know, we're never going to be perfect at it. But when the opportunity comes, no te tienes que rajar, tienes que echarle ganas. Y por eso échale. Um, da-dum, dum, dum. Why did you change the name? Obviously, this is a big one. So, Salud Podcast, obviously, was a project that me and my friend Caesar started uh, uh, two years ago. The last season, uh, I was doing it on my own, and I've always and I I've always had Echale, right? And um, as a YouTube channel, and around season three, I kind of wanted to do things already on my own, but because I was all but because I was busy. I was enjoying it. I was having fun. Um, it was in the, you know, in the back burner. Once I did season four by myself, I was like, you know what? I can do this. I can do this on my own. And I want to bring back it, Chale. So I decided. That was a decision that I decided to make. And I wanted to be like, you know what? Thank you. But I want to go my own route. I want to be able to depend on me. I want to be able to, you know, do it on my own time. And tell different types of stories not saying that we weren't doing that i just wanted all the responsibility to be on me so just in case anybody asks like hey why the name change well it was me what topics will you have i want to tell stories of gente que le echado ganas a la vida and their stories of how they got to where they're at because i think it's important a, a huge thing that I learned early on in church was the power of testimony. Re- regardless if you're religious or not, testimony heals. Testimony allows you to learn. Testimony allows you to uh, move on. So I'm hoping that through storytelling, through people coming on the podcast and telling, uh, talking about their journey, somebody else will be motivated to echarle ganas a su vida. Uh, asking for a friend, do you date older women? I have. <laughs> I was 22 at the time, and I think she was 29 with a kid. Um, that didn't last long, but I learned. <laughs> did you leave your previous job voluntarily, or did they clean house? No, I left voluntarily. 
What do you regret the most? What do I regret the most? Oh, my student loans. Definitely. I think I was young, naive, and I didn't realize. So, and not my undergrad, but for my master's. So, for my master's, they were like, hey, do you want, uh, you have this amount of money allocated per year. This is how much tuition costs. And I was all like, oh, pues si me van a dar todo, pues que me lo den todo. And obviously, I had fun. I traveled to Europe. So, for like five grand of that, I don't regret. But did I need to get all... I don't know. I think it was like 55 when I only needed 40. No, I only needed 40 to pay for my master's. Pero pues ya sabes, uno que no sabe de finanzas. Um, you know, I've always, I'm like now I preach financial literacy because I feel like if I was literate in finance at the time, then this wouldn't have happened. But you live and learn. Um, what is your biggest accomplishment, your biggest fear? The biggest fear is being alone, dying alone. Um, I'm a people person, so I want to share life with somebody and grow old with somebody. So that is my biggest fear, not being able to, you know, because even though like on social media, like, hey, we're having fun. At the end of the day, you go home and you're on your own, you know, and it's always amazing to Go back home and talk to somebody. And, and I think people take that for granted. So that is a biggest fear. Biggest accomplishment. Mm, working in radio. You know, I think ever since I said uh, I, I was small, I said I wanted to work in entertainment. I wanted to work con los famosos. <laughs> and people laughed at me. People made fun of me. People um, dissed me on it. My own family was like, oh, my God, you're that's a huge dream. You're not going to accomplish it. Accomplish it. You should just stick to something else. And I was a black sheep. I didn't listen. So when I finally started working in entertainment, I mean... Not that I was looking for a sorry, but or of like, oh, shit, we were wrong. But y'all were wrong <laughs> because they underestimated. No contaban con mi astucia, you know, mis ganas de echarle a la vida and prove people wrong. Prove me right. And actually wake up from a dream that I knew was a reality already. You know, my dream was to work in entertainment and now it's a reality. Um... Do, 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 do. How was your experience at the previous station? It was amazing. I still have amazing friends there. So I love every single one of them. They're, they're colleagues, they're teachers, um, they're friends, they're family. I've seen picture shoots you've done. What do you use them for? In, uh, inspiring actor. So the photo shoots that I've done, uh, modeling was also something that I've always wanted to do just because, again, people said... Tú, modelo, cálmate, cállate, no, hombre. Con esa cara, con esos dientes, con ese acné, like... Ugh. So then I just started to, to do it. I was uh, like, all right, you tell me no, and if people are down to work with me, then why not? So I do them for fun. I do them because if something happens out of it, I that would be amazing. And if nothing, well, at least they're great pictures that I can one day show my kids and be like, look, I actually tried it, <laughs> right? So... If something comes out of modeling, why not? What happened between you and El Cesar? I decided to go solo. So that that's what happened. Are you Charlie and Eder still friends? Charlie's my boss. So we're still friends. Uh, Eder, I haven't heard from him. So I haven't heard from him. What book has been the most influential for you and why? Hmm. A book that, oh, dang, I'm already 30 minutes in. I'm so sorry, y'all. I know this is supposed to be 15 minutes. Okay, I'm going to answer these real quick. Influential book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, definitely. The Alchemist. Um, and then Green Lights. Green Lights by, oh my gosh, Matthew McConaughey. I think it was uh, an amazing book that just put into perspective a man who's successful, but then also his his traumas as a man. It just made me reflect on my own manhood and what it really means to be a man. So I really 
appreciated that one, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because it was the thing that propelled me into learning or being more financially literate. And then The Alchemist, which talks about a journey uh, of a young man trying to find this treasure. But then along the way, and if I'm ruining it for, for all y'all, he, he realizes that there's treasure in every place that you've been. And the real treasure is everything you've learned along the way to get to where you want to go, you know? So I, I could have easily gone, let's say, from high school straight to radio and, I don't know, be, be in morning radio. But um, that would have been its own adventure or journey, and it would have probably been harder. But had I not gone through everything that I went through, um, I, I think it would it would have been boring, you know. I, I no hubiera tenido muchas ganas de, de decir nada, de hablar conocimiento de la vida. Instructions on flat tummy and peach like yours. Um, well, genetically, <laughs> uh, my family does have big thighs, so there's that. But watching what you eat, watching. How well, you know, lifting weights more than anything, calories in, calories out, tracking. So it's a whole process. But more than anything, do it because you want to do it, not because you see me on social media, you see somebody else on social media, and you're like, wow, I want that body. I wanted, I, I work out because I love it. I enjoy it. It is my stress reliever. I want abs because I want them. Not be and yes, obviously showing them off is like showing off my hard work. Like when I'm on air, and I feel like I have a good show, I'm showing you guys the well, like, you know, um, results of my work. So, I mean, just just move more than anything. I think start there, and it is hot. I didn't realize how hot it got with one, two, three lights, y'all. I am sweating. I am sweating, no sé si lo pueden ver, but without further ado, I'm going to bid you guys farewell. There was more questions. I'm going to have to do more, uh, like another Q&A and turn on the AC next time because si está haciendo calor, güey. But don't forget to follow, share, subscribe, like us on YouTube. I don't know, whatever you guys do on social media. Oh, we have a tiki ta tiki ta TikTok. We have a TikTok. <laughs> Damn. Damn, I said I was going to say it right. Okay. We're also on TikTok, y'all. So if you guys want to find us on TikTok, Echale Podcast. Echale Podcast on Instagram. Jose Quintero TV on Instagram. You already know what to do. Just go ahead and do it. Suggestions are also welcome. All right, cool. Peace out. Peace out.